evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this special 2020 edition of the Sprotshaw College Virtual Graduation. My name is Joey Kenward. I'm with Sportsnet 650 Radio in Vancouver, and our parent company, Rogers Sports and Media, has had a long-standing and very successful partnership with Sprotshaw over the last number of decades. I've been very lucky to have hosted this event in person with graduates the last couple of years, and I'm really pumped to be here tonight, even if it's a little bit different, but I think we'd all agree whether we're tuning in live around British Columbia or for those of you that might be elsewhere in a different time zone, we're all here together. And think about it, 2020 is a year we've all experienced different challenges, some highs, some lows, but tonight I hope that you can savor in this special evening as each and every one of you graduates from around British Columbia is here together to take part in this virtual ceremony. We're going to hear from some very special people who have some very special messages. And of course, it all culminates with you graduates getting a chance to see your dreams come true as proud graduates of Sprott Shaw. So without further ado, before we kick off our event, let's please all get together for the playing of our national anthem. I love unfinished things, the bookmark set between closed pages, the field that waits for seed. Canada is a place like that, a history incomplete, a traveler turning around and wondering at the distance gone, the distance yet to go. What was there, Canada? What is ever there on a country's road, but times when we were glorious and times of things no one should have done? Our anthem understands, words of pride with notes of mourning, and the music of resolve to finish and turn towards the road ahead. Here is a place to say, we go on, not as before, and so keep faith with the best of what we are. O oh Canada, it is a complex love that keeps us together, and all the more true love for that. Ka ka na da Sprotshaw College's 2020 virtual graduation. Settle in, relax, and enjoy what's on tap. We have some very special guests 
who have some very special words for each and every one of you graduates in the next little bit. Let's start by introducing the president of Sprott Shaw College, Mr. Vic Tassan. Now, Vic has more than 20 years of experience in leadership in the education sector. He's been recognized for his achievements in growing and leading successful, award-winning, and sustainable organizations. We're so happy he's with you as graduates on this special day. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to welcome and introduce the president of Sprott Shaw College, Mr. Vic Tassan. Graduates, parents, faculty, friends, and guests, we welcome you to one of the most special graduations in our 117 year history. A graduation ceremony is one of the most significant milestones in a person's life. It is a privilege to be able to share this historical moment with you and to be able to address and pay tribute to our 2020 graduating class. Graduates, you may not realize the significance of today, but in the years to come, when you're able to find a quiet moment, you will realize that completing a post-secondary college program during this time was a life-changing achievement. With few exceptions, this has changed who you were, who you are, and who you are becoming. The ripples of this experience will continue to echo and influence who you will be for the rest of your life. Your family, your friends, and your Sprott Shaw community have witnessed your efforts and dedication. And with pride, we are here to celebrate you and applaud your accomplishment. Because it requires others to help keep our lives in order, while we take temporary leave to dive into study, I would like to suggest that we begin this celebration by recognizing the family, friends, and loved ones who provided the support that enabled this moment to happen. This year, more so than any other year, their love and support have been able, have been even more integral to your success. Graduates, please join me in thanking and recognizing those who have supported you for the invaluable part that they have played in your journey. 2020 has been a year like no other for all of us. Our world is currently fighting two enemies, the invisible enemy COVID-19 and the very visible enemy racism. The safety and normalcy of our lives have been disrupted and upended. Simple pleasures we took for granted, such as hugging a friend, participating in our favorite sports or activities, or even attending a graduation have been forever changed. Many have also suffered illness, physical and mental or human loss at the hand of the coronavirus pandemic. And to those, my sincerest condolences. Others have demonstrated the courage to share stories of racism and to stand up for what is right and proper. To you, my deepest respect and admiration. While our world has been forever changed, these two enemies have also shown some of the greatest aspects of what it means to be human and how geography and boundaries do not define us. The stories about hoarders that in the initial stages dominated our news channels were soon replaced with stories about the millions of frontline healthcare and essential workers who put others ahead of themselves, who instead of living selfishly, chose selfishness. People from all parts of the world are working together for one of the first times in our lives and are showing that boundaries do not matter. Life, choosing kindness and choosing compassion are what matters. Moreover, racial tension, systemic racism, and inequality have moved to the forefront. Again, people all around the globe, especially in the younger generations, are uniting and standing up to what is wrong and demonstrating the courage to speak out and to say enough is enough. We are acknowledging that we are all human and equal. We are acknowledging that racism exists and continues to plague our world. And most notably, irrespective of race, religion, or color, we are standing up together, united, to fight the inequalities and injustices that exist. Racism has left deep-rooted scars across our globe, but we are learning that race, color, or ethnicity do not matter. Nelson Mandela wrote, No one is born hating another because of the color of his skin, or his background, or his religion. People must learn to hate, and if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love for love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. As human beings, we share the ability to be understanding, to be compassionate, and to be empathetic. These are things that make us human, that make us special, and that make us who we are. 
And now, more than ever, it is critical that we demonstrate these attributes, that each of us strive to embrace the beauty of humanity and work towards being the best person we can be. Only through this can we create and embody real change and put an end to racism and the pandemics we currently face. Graduates, when you look back at your graduating year, you will realize it was not about what you missed out on by not being able to attend your graduation, but by what you were a part of. Our first impression is often what we have lost, but the resiliency of the human spirit is more about what we have done and what we have overcome. Your graduation year is a testament to the latter. It is a time of strength, it is a time where we chose possible, and it'll be a time where we made the world a better place because of the actions we carried out. Each of you has also demonstrated this resiliency in your educational path. Your choice to follow your passion and choose your next career, and more so to complete it, is evidence of this. The word career is derived from the Latin word charis, or as we know it, chariot. The official definition of career is a pathway that one follows through one's life. And as we consider this pathway, we are reminded that the world is made up of those who record the steps that were taken to get them to where they are today, and those who map out the way to get to a future that they've envisaged. Famed psychologist Maslow noted this difference when he asserted that, you will either step forward into growth or you will step backward into safety. Today, we celebrate the ones that moved forward, those who took a stand, made the sacrifices, took the risk, and those who today walk away with something far greater than a parchment paper. For so many of you, you demonstrated an even greater resiliency when as of March of this year, you needed to adapt to a new way of being, requiring change in how you went about your everyday, including how you undertook your learning. Through all of these changes, you persevered, and your success in doing so is being recognized today. Education changes us. The change that begins the minute we make the decision to enroll and study and continues throughout the length of the program. The further we immerse ourselves, the more we come to understand how much there is to learn. The more we learn, the more we grow and change. Graduates, who you are today is not who you were when you first began this journey. You have earned something of immeasurable value, something that can never be taken from you. You have earned a new understanding and with this diploma, you are being recognized by experts in the field for what you now know. Know that you are also part of a much larger and greater community as the 117th graduating class of Sprotshaw College. You are joining a proud and storied tradition of over 100,000 alumni. In the 1920s, after Marconi had invented the radio, Sprotshaw, through its radio and telegraph program, offered its Vancouver school launched BC's very first ever radio station. A decade later, facing the critique of her would-be book publishers because of her illegible handwriting, world-renowned artist Emily Carr chose to overcome the obstacle that was put before by enrolling in a typing program at Sprotshaw's Victoria School. A little later, in the 1940s, and back at the Sprotshaw School of Commerce and Radio in Vancouver, Jack Cullen, after graduating with his diploma, went on to preside over the Vancouver Airwaves for more than five decades with his legendary radio show. Another graduate from that same Sprotshaw School, Ernie Rose, in 1947, after learning that Seattle would soon have its first TV station on the air, built BC's first video receiver using war surplus radar equipment. This led Ernie to create Vancouver's very first TV station. For over 117 years, Sprotshaw has persevered through the Great Depression, several economic recessions, world wars, geopolitical strife, and numerous health and environmental pandemics, while all along graduating risk takers. Those who have been prepared to do what it takes to drive their own chariot. As the first private college in Canada to be granted the right to offer practical nursing education, Sprotshaw counts amongst its graduates, not only the entrepreneur, the craftsperson, the technician, the career, the educator, and the administrator, but also thousands of graduates who have gone on to make a difference in patient care and well-being. In fact, all Sprotshaw graduates have and will make a difference, some for the many, but all also for their own lives.
For while today, of course, represents the dawning of opportunities, perhaps more importantly, today is a statement about you, your courage and your strength. I am extremely honored to be witnessing today's recognition and would like you to know that I, along with my colleagues, am fully invested in you and believe in the future that you have envisaged. For just like the few great Canadians mentioned here, Jack, Ernie and Emily, as a Sprotshaw graduate, the determination and vision that brought you to this spot today will prepare you well for a future of your making. If you ever needed proof that you can, then today is that proof. You are a chariot driver. Graduates, as you move forward, remain resilient and continue to be courageous. When you interact with people, choose compassion. And when you are faced with obstacles and hurdles, look for opportunities and always choose possible. And when life presents those struggles, look back at today and remember. Remember you will overcome because it is those exact same traits that you now possess that led you here to this moment. But for tonight, celebrate, revel in this moment and recognize your accomplishments. And most importantly, be proud of who you are, what you have done and who you have become because I know I speak for your family, friends and all of us at Sprotshaw College when I say, we are very proud of you. Congratulations, class of 2020. Thanks very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very privileged to have a very important person join us for our live virtual graduation ceremony. With messages from our provincial capital in Victoria, please welcome the Premier of BC, the Honorable Mr. John Horgan. Premier John Horgan here. As you begin, your journey outside of the classroom, I want to congratulate you on an extraordinary trip to this day. I imagine it's very disappointing for you to not be celebrating together, but I want you to know as a community, we're celebrating with you. The skills that you've acquired are the skills that we need to move our community forward. All of us have been waiting for you to arrive. We elders are waiting for the younger generation to come forward. I welcome you, go forward, enjoy what you've learned, enjoy what's ahead of you, create a better society for yourself, for your community, and for the world. Thanks very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Shane Gibson is with us tonight. If you haven't heard of him, well, you'll certainly know more about him after you hear him talk to us in just a few moments. He's an internationally recognized published author and public speaker. He's spoken in front of more than 200,000 people over the years in countries like Canada, the USA, Mexico, South Africa, India, Dubai, Malaysia, plus numerous other countries throughout South America. He's gotten great recognition for his work. In fact, he's listed at number five on Forbes.com's top 30 list for social salespeople in the world. His clients include organizations like the Ford Motor Company, BMO Financial, Sun Life, CPA Canada, the U.S. Department of Commerce, MicroAge, plus dozens of other businesses on five different continents. Now, when he's not working, and usually he is, but when he's not, he's very active. He hikes, he runs, and spends time with his family throughout the Lower Mainland, which he calls home. Ladies and gentlemen, we're so happy that he's with us for a special talk to you graduates. Please join me in welcoming one of our guest speakers this evening, Shane Gibson. Hello, Sprotshaw graduates. Thank you very much for inviting me in to help celebrate this really important occasion and this incredible achievement for all of you. Today, what I want to talk about is what I call the relationship quotient. And that is really how relationships propel your success and your health. So, Really where this starts is this great quote that was shared with me by Darcy Rizek, who wrote the book, Work the Pond. What he said is your network is your net worth. Now be, me being an author and a sales trainer and a professional speaker, I found this to be absolutely true as a solopreneur and an entrepreneur, that my network, the strength of my network, but also the strength of the ties and the depth of relationships has really been incredibly important to my success and the success of those people I work with. Now, many of you are wondering, why would Sprotshaw bring in this guy who trains sales trainers or speaks on stages around the world to business organizations to come talk to me? Um, I'm an HCA. I'm a professional nurse. I'm an early childhood educator. I'm an electrician. What does this have to do with me? 
I think it's important to realize that sales is actually a life skill. So if you had to convince one of your instructors to allow you to hand in an assignment late and they agreed, you've successfully sold something, you sold an idea. If you wanna to go to one movie and your spouse wants to go to the other, then you're now in sales. Uh, if your kids don't wanna to go to bed at nine o'clock and you want them to, you're in sales. So sales is, is really a life skill. It's something that we can all develop and it's truly the ability to persuade and create win-win solutions for you and another person. I like to define sales as it being about creating an environment where an act of faith can take place. That's really, and that's what relationships and leadership is really about. It's about creating an environment where an act of faith can take place. Now, with that said, there's a number of things that go into creating that environment. And the number one is our outlook on relationships. What do we truly believe to be true about relationships and the importance of connecting with other people? One of my favorite quotes is from my dad, Bill Gibson. And what he said is, some people use the relationship to get the deal, but the reality is the relationship is the deal. And this is true in professional business relationships, regardless of where we work or what direction our career is going, is the relationships we create and foster authentically are really the foundation for our success later on. For myself, I look at the recent pandemic and watching 90% of my business be canceled because I spent a lot of time standing on stage and some major challenges for me and my peers in the industry. What's been amazing to me is in a period of four or five months, I've been able to replace all that past business with new business, but it's from historically relationships that I've invested in, where I highly value building relationships with my clients, and I've found a group of people that also value that. So I think it's really important to look at is that finding environments where people truly celebrate the importance of relationships, and then for us to take advantage of that and heavily invest in them. So let's talk about relationships and how they actually impact our quality of life and health. So I came across this study a few years back and it was actually done by Brian Young University in Utah. And they took 148 studies and over 308,000 subjects and they kind of put them together and mashed the numbers. And they looked at these studies measured network strength, number of ties and length of relationships. And what they found is by improving the number of connections and deepening them and sustaining them, it actually improves our longevity as much as quitting smoking or maintaining a healthy personal body weight. So actually building connections and networks around us in our community and professionally, and then deepening them, it has a huge health benefit. In fact, a feeling of community and knowing we have friends and support actually helps us reduce cortisol levels and helps us manage stress better and rejection better as children and as adults. And as we age, being not isolated and being connected to the community actually lowers our blood pressure and reduces the chances of actually having dementia as we get older. So it's literally linked to improving brain elasticity. What we also found around building powerful networks and relationships is that people at the center of large networks are actually happier. And so from this perspective, there's a real value in beginning at the beginning of your career, or maybe this is a restart for your career or a new direction, and beginning to truly and authentically invest in relationships. So professional relationships aren't just about being likable, but also it's about being credible. So we think about things like keeping commitments, investing in our own professional competencies and knowledge, which is exactly what you spent many months or maybe years doing at Sprachshaw College before your graduation. So this credibility, the professional credibility and knowledge is something that I would urge you to continue to double down on and continue to invest on long after your graduation. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some quick tips to growing and deepening your network. There are 13 quick tips, but hopefully I'll leave you some things to think of. You might not implement all 13 of these, but I think they're really important thoughts to look at around how can I embrace these things to improve my professional network or begin to grow it and really set the foundation for a successful lifetime career. So here's some tips on growing your network. Number one, be referable. Don't pressure for leads or assistance right away. And what I'm talking about is that, you know, the first time I meet somebody, you know, or I connect with them on even LinkedIn and they reach out and say, hey, Shan, I noticed you're connected with this person. Can you help me out? Or, hey, nice to meet you. Can you do this for me? And I find that in many cases, or someone who spends the number, plays the numbers game, where they're just networking and connecting with a ton of people, but they're not actually working on their own credibility. 
So from this perspective, one of the true powers of being an effective networker and relationship builder and member of a community is becoming referable. And that's all about adding value, about contributing, and really realizing that you get out of a network in a community what you put in. Number two is be interested, not interesting. So this is really important if you're networking in the community or you're talking to a potential employer, is that from this perspective, a lot of people worry about how they're showing up or how they're looking, but the reality is the most powerful networkers and powerful relationship builders are truly interested in other people. In sales, I call it the 70-30 ratio, where we're listening 70% of the time and asking great questions and offering great advice 30% of the time. Number three is, contrary to what Facebook will have you believe, you can't have 200 best friends. So part of being successful at building a personal, professional network is actually prioritizing. So really looking at who you resonate the most with from a values perspective, but also what mentors and connections in the community are gonna give you the greatest return on investment. So a good example of a hub in your community is gonna be Sprottshaw College. It's gonna be the ESS who helps you go out there and land your first, second, and third job and those resources available. They're highly networked in the community. And so from this perspective, this might be a relationship you wanna proactively invest in, for instance. So be proactive with your key relationships was my fourth point. Number five is add value with your network. So don't just look at what you can get out of your network, but also who you can help by connecting people. Number six is bank your equity. So for me, when I make a new connection, I think, how can I help versus what can I get? Number seven, remember, it's a small town. I'm not, that doesn't mean like just Maple Ridge is a small town or just Penticton is a small town. Vancouver is a small town. Toronto is a small town. In this hyper-connected world where everybody is connected to everybody and everybody's found everybody on social networks, anything we do will follow us around the internet and in our career. So it's really important to think long-term and think truly taking the high road in our career activities. Number eight, map and seek out the white hot center in any network. So look for the individuals, the people who are making the biggest difference and connect with them. Number nine, and for you, if I'm an early childhood educator, for instance, um, you know, one of these things I would look at is who the leading entrepreneurs are in the community who are doing the most. Who are the educators who are doing the greatest research and contribution in the community around early childhood education? Who are the major organizations and who runs them? And how can I get involved and even volunteer maybe in my spare time to get really connected with the early childhood educators community? Who are the movers and shakers? Because through those relationships over time, many opportunities will happen. Number nine, I said this earlier, is the more you give, the more you get from a community. Number 10, and this is so important, back to career relationships, professional relationships are about likability and credibility. And that means keep your promises and follow through. Second to last is be seen. So whether it's online, through online events, through LinkedIn, through your professional platforms and in-person events, is be seen in your community. Stay present, stay involved, and you'll find more opportunities come your way. And it's just at the end of the day, the more connected we are, as we've heard from this study earlier, actually there's many health benefits as well. Number 12 is step it up every year. So for me, one of my goals every year is actually to go network or connect to the group of people that might intimidate me a little bit, that might make me grow and stretch my ability to connect and maybe even push my boundaries around my own self-worth or confidence because by doing that, I actually grow and get better at building my professional network. So kind of summarizing this is while you're busy hustling, learning new things and getting tasks done, stop and take time to connect and deepen relationships. Your authentic professional relationships are an investment in your future health, wealth, and happiness. Thank you. Your valedictorian from the Kamloops campus is Shelby Piva, who's graduating from the Executive Legal Administrator with Practicum Program. As I'm sitting here today trying to write out what to say for a speech, I find myself being a little lost and not knowing where to start. So I'm going to start off by saying congratulations to all our graduates. Before Sprottshaw, I'm sure you all felt the same way that I do, not knowing where to start. But here we all are sitting here and we should all be extremely proud of ourselves. We made it. We made it through the ups, the downs, successes, struggles, and I'm sure a few failures along the way. But we did it, all of us. 
we graduated. We took the chance on ourselves for a brighter and bigger future, taking this giant leap of faith in hopes we find a career that we love. For some of us, before Sprasha, starting a family came first. For others, it was just time for a career change. And even some of us dipping our toes into Sprasha fresh out of high school. But no matter what path we chose, it all led us to the same place, college at Sprasha. <laughs> and we did it. We finished. I would like to thank everyone who helped each and every one of us along the way. At some point in our journey, we all had someone lend us a hand, a kind word, and the push we needed. This person could have been your spouse, a child, or a supportive staff member. We truly could not have done it without all the love, support, and everything else you did for us along this journey. So thank you. I also want to extend a thank you to all the fellow students that helped each and every one of us along the way. Without one another, this would not have been possible. Every class was filled with enthusiasm, kindness, support, and a lot of humor, <laughs> which made every day at Sprotshaw a fun day and an easy way to learn. You all played a very important part in this special moment for all of us, and for that, thank you and congratulations. To tie things off, I wanna congratulate every single one of you for this giant accomplishment in your life. I wish you all the best in your future endeavors and I hope to see you all succeed in your careers. So here's to the grad class. Congratulations and good luck with whatever you choose to do in your future. Thanks once again and congratulations and a job well done to each and every one of our valedictorians who spoke with us this evening representing the various campuses around British Columbia. Well, it's that time so many of you have been waiting for this evening. Let's get underway with our commencement ceremony.
once again, congratulations, graduates. You are now part of the class of 2020 of Sprott Shaw College. And by the way, a big congratulations and a massive thank you to all of you who have joined our graduates for today's special ceremony. Whether you're family members or friends, your support at this time has been incredible. That pretty much does it. Oh yeah, only one thing left to take care of. Graduates, grab those caps and throw them in the air. Congratulations again on being the class of 2020 at Sprott Shaw College. My name's Joey Kenward. It's been my pleasure and my honor to be your MC for our virtual graduation ceremony. Have a safe and fantastic night and enjoy being a part of Sprott Shaw College's graduation class. Thanks again, everybody. Shaw College since 1903.